it is an interesting year, Tony, where you got a guy like Zach Eady, who probably will be the national player of the year, and he's a marginal NBA player. All right, Jay, this season of men's college hoops, it doesn't seem to have the same brand recognition of previous seasons. Why is that, and what do you think can be done to change it? First of all, Caitlin Clark's got something to do with that because she's got women's hoops so hot right now. Everybody's following that. And it is it is an interesting year, Tony, where you got a guy like Zach Eady, who probably will be the national player of the year, and he's a marginal NBA player. You know, you've got... Um, I think you're making a really good point because you've got guys that are staying in, like Armando Baycott for North Carolina. You've got guys that are staying in college longer because they're not guys that are going to go right into the NBA draft. Mm. And the younger guys that are going to go into the NBA draft, those guys aren't as successful in college basketball now because all of the older players are staying. Mm. So the older players are winning – the younger players that will be drafted aren't as impactful as they used to be. Like a Zion Williams, when, when he came out, he was so impactful. The younger guys in the draft now um, aren't as impactful because older guys like Hunter Dickinson are, are staying in college. So do you think that can change? I mean, to your point, you knew Zion was the guy. You knew Ja was the guy. You knew even having coaches, like coaches were larger than life. You knew this. Is there anything that could change, in, in, or is it a product of the one and done? Like, what can be done to, to help the branding of men's sports right now? Men's it's, a really interesting, it's a really interesting point you're bringing up, Tony, because I think it's really good for college basketball because the product on the floor is better. Scoring is up. Shooting percentages up. The games are outstanding. But let's take, for instance, Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard at Kentucky. They are both going to be lottery picks. But they don't even start for Kentucky mm. because older guys are playing. College basketball is getting so much older. There were so many guys that were leaving college basketball with the hope of playing in the NBA. And a good percentage of them were not making the NBA, but they couldn't come back to college. Now, because of NIL, they're staying in college because they can make money in college. And they're really more effective than these young guys are in the college game. These young guys, it'll take them a couple of years in the NBA until they're effective, but they'll still get drafted early. I, I think it's actually good for the college game. You don't have as much hype when these guys are coming into the NBA, but I think you're getting a more finished product. Like a Dalton Connect at Tennessee – is a fifth-year guy. He's going to be a, a lottery pick, but he's going to be a lottery pick that's ready to play immediately in the NBA. Now, it seems like women's hoops have more excitement right now than men's hoops. Players like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are household names, whereas casual fans probably can't even name a big-time men's player. Will there be more eyes on the women's tournament this year, in your opinion? Oh, uh, definitely. The women's game is, is growing incredibly, and... Uh, their, their tournament is growing also, um, I, I think. Everyone's going to want to see how Caitlin Clark does now in the tournament. They've watched her all year. They want to see how does Iowa do in the tournament. And Angel Reese and LSU, can, can they repeat? You know, what about South Carolina? Dawn Staley created such a dynasty right there. And then you've always got you got Gino Oriemo and the, and the Connecticut team, Paige Beckers, everybody. Everybody knows her. They want to see what she's doing. Tara Vanderveer at Stanford has just broken Coach K's winning record. So she's got some hype coming into the tournament too. I I think it's a I think it's a cycle, Tony. I think it just is this is one of those years that women's basketball is, is is really getting a lot more attention. I want to do a segment called Write the Script, where you tell us how a few things will play out in this year's March Madness. So write the script. Which team or teams will we be talking about as a Cinderella or bracket buster? Interesting. I, I don't know if this team can count as a bracket buster, and if it doesn't, I'll pick another. But I don't feel like anybody's talking about Iowa State. And they're and and they're the number one defensive team in the country. And, you know, the numbers change week to week. They're one, two, three, but they're the best defensive team I've seen in the country. And and they've they've got uh, a point guard in Taman Lipsy that can control a game. Uh, 
they could be a team that could get to a Final Four. They could win it all. I, and I, there are other teams, obviously like Houston and Kansas and and UConn that people talk about. But Iowa State's one that I think could get there, and it really wouldn't surprise me. Okay, now which player do you think we'll be talking about as the star of the tournament? I don't know if this guy's going to be a star, but I want Indiana State to get in the tournament so bad because I want everybody to see this big guy, Rob Avila. He wears goggles. He's not like, he's like 6'10". He's not the, the most fit guy in the world, but he can ball. But if they get in, I think people are going to be shocked when they see how talented this guy is. And the fact that he, if he played a guy like Zach Eady, he could pull him away from the basket and shoot threes. Now, to answer your question, Tony, if you, if you look at it, a player that I think could be the most dominant that everybody knows about, obviously Zach Eady. But the second guy that people don't talk about as much that really could be is Tristan Newton, the point guard at UConn. He can really dominate a game. All right, now this is my favorite question because we're going to have some fun with this. I'm giving you the pen. I want you to write the ending to the national championship. Who will be there and who do you think will win? Give us the whole you, – you create the script. Well, it would be, I think, great basketball for fans and coaches. Maybe not as exciting in storytelling if UConn and Purdue and, let's say, Houston and – Tennessee, the, the four teams I think are playing the best now, if they got to the Final Four, and if you saw UConn last year's champion go against Purdue in the final, and Zach Eady, because UConn already won it last year, and we're writing a script. If Zach Eady could finally end his college career, National Player of the Year, second time, and Matt Painter could dispel all the criticism that he can't get to a Final Four, and Purdue could win a national championship. I think that game, a UConn-Purdue national championship game, will be off the charts, and Purdue winning it will be a nice story. Hey, sports fans. If you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here, and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.